today we will be having an introduction to the concept of replication. Before I go ahead and make you understand what replication in MongoDB actually is, I will be telling you what all EasyLearn.Guru offers you. EasyLearn.Guru offers you lifetime NMS access that is a learning management system. Uh, we also provide you on-demand support. Uh, we also give you EasyLearn.Guru certification that is after the completion of the course you, will, you are supposed to uh, submit us a project and after that you have to give us a final examination and uh, if you clear that you will be given an easy and approved certification. Next is easy and on demand rescheduling of classes. Uh, in case you are not able to attend any of your class you can easily reschedule it. There will be separate doubt clearing sessions available for you. You will be having uh, like in case you have any doubt there will be a separate uh, session of you and the instructor and you can ask your queries there. And all the instructors are normally be university certified instructors, so they are experts in their field. Okay, now we will move ahead towards replication. Before we go ahead and understand replication as a concept, we will see the, what basically replication is. See, replication is a way of keeping identical copies of your data on multiple servers and is recommended for all production deployments. Replication keeps your application running and your data safe even if something happens to one or more of your servers. So basically what replication is that you can have multiple copies of your data that is identical copies of your data or data on different server and with this what actually happens that your application is running uh, safely and even if something happens to one of your server your data will still be available with the rest of the server. So that is the concept of replication to keep your data highly available with you and MongoDB supports replication. Uh, quite nicely and with the help of MongoDB you can have your data maximum like always available with you. Right? So now we will uh, move ahead with the concept of replication. So the diagram that you are able to see on the screen. Right? So this is uh, the mas basic components of you can say of replication. See this is your client application. Right? This is your client's application. So whenever the client sends a request it goes to a primary. Do not worry, I will be telling you what this primary, secondary and arbiter are. But these are the basic, basic structure uh, in which the replication is actually done. Right? So you, your client application request is sent to the primary. Your primary accepts the uh, application request and then the uh, data is replicated to the secondary. So your secondary is actually keeping all the, like, the data replicated to uh, this secondary node and then you also have this arbiter available which is not copying the data, all the data. But I will be telling you in the coming slide what is the actual purpose of this arbiter. What is the requirement when it is not copying the data, right? I will be telling you that in the coming slide. But this is just to make you understand how the structure of a replication in MongoDB is. Then there is a concept of heartbeat as you can see here. The concept of heartbeat is that, see, these are three different nodes, right? And they should be knowing that which node is live or not. See, in this case you think of a situation where your secondary goes down. So your primary must be having the knowledge that it is down, right? So heartbeat works as a signal between all these nodes. So whenever like uh, the heartbeats are sent from one node to other as so that each and every node can understand and know that the rest are still alive. Right? So that is the purpose of your heartbeat. Okay, next now we will see each and every uh, component clearly and in detail. See, this is your primary. This is replica set primary. Primary is the only member in the replica set that receives the write operation, right? So you can perform your writes from the primary only. Okay, so only you can have only one primary in a replica set and all the writes will be performed there. MongoDB applies write operation on primary and then records this on the primary's opt-out. Okay? So what is actually happening? You have a primary and then you have a primary's opt-out. Do not worry, I will be telling you what this primary's opt-out is. But see here first we have to understand that you have a primary. You wrote A here. So it is being replicated to the primary's opt-out. Right? It is being kept in the primary's opt-out. Opt-out is actually operations log. It is a special collection that keeps the rolling the record of all the operations that are like modifying 
on your data, you're storing some data. So it keeps a little, the OPLOG keeps a little of whatever operation is performed on your uh, data. Right, so that is what your OPLOG actually does. So this is your primary. Next is your secondary. Replica is secondary. See, a secondary maintains a copy of the primary's data. Right, so whatever is written to your primary, it is replicated to the OPLOG. Right, your OPLOG is having everything. From this OPLOG, we'll see it uh, in the coming slide that from this OPLOG, the data is uh, sent to the secondary's oplog and then this data is entered to the secondary. Okay? So, like it goes to the secondary from this oplog. Okay? Now the replica set can, ha can have more than one secondary. See, a replica set, you have a replica set, you can have one primary, but you can have more than one secondary. Okay? Now the client cannot write data to secondary. No writes can be performed to secondary directly. The client can do reads from the secondary, right? That is, you have the facility of reading from the secondary, but you cannot write anything to your secondary, right? That is not permitted to you. Now the secondary have this power of becoming the primary. By this, what I actually mean, I will make you understand after I will tell you what arbiter is, okay? And that secondary has this power of becoming primary. Now, if the current primary is unavailable, the replica sets holds an election to choose which of the secondaries become the new primary. See, I'll tell you here itself. See, what happens? You have a primary, then you have a secondary. As I told you, you can have more than one secondary. So, suppose you have three secondary and an arbiter. Okay? This is how, you, how it works. You have secondary, secondary, secondary and an arbiter right here. This is your primary. Now all your data is being replicated to this and it is not having any data being replicated to this. Now suppose your primary goes down. See all the writes are performed only in the primary. Now the your secondary in situation your primary goes down, an election will be held. Election is to elect that which of the secondary have the capability of becoming the primary. And when the elections results are selected, one of the secondary becomes the primary until the time your primary is down a new secondary is elected as a primary and all the rights are directed to this secondary because now this secondary is no more secondary, it is primary. And you might think how it is possible and why it is possible. It is possible because this secondary has the same data as this primary. So it has all, the, all of the capabilities of becoming the primary, an effective primary. Right? So this is how your data is always available, high availability is given to you since your data is always available to you. Okay? Next is the concept of arbiter. See, our arbiter does not have a copy of data and cannot become a primary because it is not replicating the data, therefore it does not have the capability of becoming the primary. Whereas the replica set may have arbiters to add votes in the election. See, replica, arbiter has this capability of voting. As I told you, we have an election. So, there are situations in which if you have an even number of uh, members, your votes may like go to a tie. See, suppose this is your primary, secondary, secondary. Your primary goes down. Now there is a situation where a vote is required. So this will vote for suppose this secondary. Now this has voted for it and this goes and voted for this and then again this thing has uh, voted for this, right? So you won't be having a majority, right? If it votes for itself or suppose it goes and votes for this, right? So you don't have a majority available right here. See, this voted for this, okay? Now this voted, this voted for this and then this voted for this and uh, suppose, uh, oh see, this would be a wrong example. I'll explain you again. See, uh, sorry for that. See, uh, this primary has gone down, right? It voted for this. This have its own vote, so it voted for itself. So now this secondary has two votes. This secondary voted for itself and this secondary two voted for it. So now you have two votes here. You have a tie. You won't be able to get a primary because you have a tie right here, right? So what arbiter will do? Arbiter will work as a tiebreaker. It will be a tiebreaker. So it also have a vote since it do not have the capability of becoming a primary. So it will voting for some of the some of the second, right? 
So if it is like this as a secondary, it will have three votes, it will win and this will become your new primary. Okay, so this is how arbiter word and that is what the reason of adding an arbiter to a replica set is to make an uneven number of members so that you can have a nice vote and you can get your output as soon as possible. You can elect your primary as soon as possible. So that is the concept of a replica set and arbiter and this was the basic concept how in MongoDB replica set works like. Thank you for watching the video. You can always contact us at contact at the our Skype ID easylike.guru, our website www.easylike.guru. Your queries are always welcome. Thank you and have a nice day.